Greetings, salutations, welcome to Tech 3D, Neil here. Right, mate, this is a talking head video, like a, you could call it a podcast if you will. Uh, I'm just going to unapologetically long waffle session, because uh, I'm back on software, mate, loving it, loving it. It's just, I'm getting comments and feedback and questions that I just wasn't getting before, and ah, some stuff that I can't reply, well I can't, but I can't really give and enough of an answer to in a comment reply. So I thought I'll make a I'll make a, a talking head video where you can you can minimize me, you can you can you can watch me if you want. Just, just watch it. It's up to you. But yeah, I, I need to give some context around this answer because I've uh, it's one of those ones where I've got a lot of skin in the game on this one. <laughs> and uh, I thought yeah I can I can offer quite a bit on this one. And uh, it's it's good filler content, if you will. So Neil when's the best time to learn inventor and how? Being that it's got a ridiculous amount of features, do you use books? Do you take lessons? Do you do it before or after uni? Age-old question. It is the age-old question. When's the best time to learn something and how? Uh, so it's a multi-faceted question. And it doesn't, you know, the, the, the answer doesn't really just apply to Inventor. You can replace Inventor with anything, right? Unreal Engine, SolidWorks, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, 3D Studio Max. You name it. Uh, not necessarily Microsoft Paint or, I don't know, Corsair's IQ software, right? It's, it's got, we're talking about the software that's got a high learning curve, a high skill ceiling, and a huge bump at the start of it before you can even get going. You know, a lot of these high, complicated pieces of software, they've got, you know, barriers to entry and that barrier is yourself pretty much it's um it's something that needs a big time commitment just to get started because they're, they're really difficult to wrap your head around and a lot of it kind of comes down to where you are in your life and um i guess this is where the waffling sort of comes in so back in the mid 2000s i, I was a a training instructor at an autodesk platinum reseller for about eight years so I, I, did, I did a lot of training courses back then and and so I was the teacher in a classroom. I saw a lot of training delegates come through. I uh, did AutoCAD training courses, Inventor training courses, Vault training courses, you name it, right? I had pretty much everything. People from all walks of life, all different kinds of ages, from all different kinds of backgrounds came through. And a classroom training course is just one of the hows of how do you learn but it's the one that most people would sort of point the finger at is, well, do do that, just do a training course. It's usually the go-to answer for, you know, in business of how do you learn software, take a training course. But it's, and this is just my opinion, right? It's not going to, you know, not everyone's going to agree with this. So I'm not going to mistake my opinion with fact. But training courses do not work with everyone. In fact, in a lot of cases, they they fail more often than they work and this is my experience. Training courses, take an inventor one, for example. It's a four-day course. You've got the first two days of intensive part sketching and part modeling. And it's it's high intense. It's one day you're getting just bombarded with how to do sketching, how to what's the vertical constraint, horizontal constraint, you know, the coincident constraint, then you're, then you're on to extrude, then revolve, then sweep, then loft, and then then you're on to mirror, mirror command, then you're on to the whole command, then you're on to pattern, then you're on, it's just boom, 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 boom. Then you, you've got a week break in between day one and day two. And unless the people on the training course go back to their office and they start using the software immediately, bums on seats, using it, it's it's difficult. It's really difficult for the information they learned to stick. And then you come back. You've got day three and day four, which is assemblies and drawings. And it's angle constraint. It's made constraint. It's joints. It's right. It's it, it's everything about it. And then it's drawings. It's base view. It's it, it's projected view. It's dimensions. It's aligned dimensions. It's detail views. And it, it, it's like boom, boom, boom. It's information overload. The younger generation, informa the, the information, they're just taking in like a sponge and it, it, it's not a problem for them. Older, the older generation really struggled. They, they really, really struggled to, to, to take the information on board. 
and and, and remember it and then apply it. And in fact, the what I observed was the the older generation, their primary goal on a training course wasn't to actually learn. It was to keep up. It was to keep up with what the instructor was doing or what everyone else in the class was doing. So you you would always have a mixed bag. You usually have a mixed bag. You maybe have a couple of younger guys in there and a, you know a, a few older guys. And there was always a few people who were quicker than the others. In the slower ones, their goal was to try and keep up with the with the younger guys. You know, and when they're trying to keep up, they're not really understanding what they're doing. Their goal is to keep up. So that their goal is to follow what they're being told to do, not understand what they're being told to do. Uh, and that's not training. That's just robotically following along. So it, for those guys, training just didn't work. I could tell. Um, and myself at the time, I was young. I was I was in my mid to late 20s. Uh, and I was of the age where a training course probably would have worked for me. But, you know, I, I tried to help. But there's only so much you can do. You, you can't make someone of the older persuasion absorb information. And so you can help. You can work around them, work with them. But ultimately, you know, it is what it is. Um, it was difficult to empathize with them because uh, if you can't understand and you can't empathize with that uh, difficult to understand mentality, you know, it, it, it is difficult. But now that I am I'm of that age, I am now 41. I get it. I, I get how, how being just chucked information at you nonstop all day. It's boom, 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 boom. Now this, now that, now this, now that. And at the end of the day, I think I'd struggle to remember what we did in the morning and how that would then, if I was to go back to the office, how would I apply what I learned in that morning in the real world? I don't think I could. Whereas the younger generation, it just, it just stuck because they're, they're young. They don't have 20 years plus later of life experience and other stuff they've learned in their brains to deal with and preconceptions and thoughts about, well, buts and ifs and whats and how does that work and that doesn't make sense they just take it in and they just apply it uh, it's that um not necessarily naive mentality but just i don't know the innocence of, of youth right just take it and just do what you're told and just apply it where just don't think just don't just don't question it right whereas the older guys tend to tend to do that they want they want to question everything so classroom stuff doesn't work for everyone the, the, the other way of learning and the, uh, the how do you learn inventor is online training. That's another way. So disregard classroom training and go to somewhere like LinkedIn, LinkedIn Learning, Pluralsight, uh, Udemy. There's a lot of online training. And this would work for somebody who prefers to learn at their own pace. I mean, of course, there are still books. I don't know if... I think you can still buy paperback books with learning material in for the likes of inventor. There may be still people who prefer a paper book on a desk to learn through. Uh, I mean, if that's you, good luck. <laughs> There'll be people who prefer that physical, you know, tangible asset that they own, that they can refer to, uh, you know, a physical reference material. Uh, but you can buy digital books as well and have it, as, you know, in your browser is just a click. There it is. There's your book online. But um, not knocking it. If that's what you prefer, fine. But I, I personally couldn't just flick through book pages and look for a book. I'd, I'd prefer Control F, search for a word, boom, there you are. There's the word you're looking for. There's the page. But hey, whatever works for you. <laughs> if it works for you, it works for you. But um, online learning, digital e-learning is another way. Having so I, I've done everything. I've I've been the trainer in a classroom. I've also been a deliverer, an author of e-learning on Plural Site. So I've authored and created three, maybe four invented training courses on Pluralsight. Um, they work, but the, the, the thing is, I, won't, I don't want to say the problem is, the thing is with e-learning training is it's entirely dependent on who the trainer is and how they've crafted the course. There is, there is no accreditation or auditing done by Autodesk on the people who create courses on e-learning sites so anyone anyone in theory can be asked by linkedin learning or plural site or udemy to be a trainer for autodesk inventor and create a course on their website you don't know who that person is i mean they can create that they can do their bio right they can tell you who they are but 
that doesn't necessarily mean that what they're doing is accredited. It's not approved. It's not It's not essentially audited by Autodesk as being, yes, this is how we want our software to be taught. Um, and also the courses, again, it, it, they're, they're a mixed bag. Having been on somewhere like Skillshare, I once refused a... I say once, the only time I refused a sponsorship from Skillshare because they said, this was a long time ago, uh, do, do, you, do you want to do a sponsorship deal? Well, you know, you've, you'll have seen Skillshare. There's a video sponsored by Skillshare, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they came to me and said, can we sponsor your channel? I was like, uh, I don't do sponsorships unless I check the product first and I make sure it's okay. So I got a login for Skillshare, checked out their CAD courses, and they were absolutely f***ing terrible. Uh, the, the courses were... You know, like resolution of a postage stamp. The, the the trainers were monotone, really boring to listen to. Uh, some of the content I just listened. I was like, "That's wrong. That's that's actually wrong." <laughs> to be honest, I I wouldn't do that that way. And it was long winded. A lot of the courses were almost sales material. In fact, they were just the, the people hosting the training courses were trying to sell their own services in a training course. I was like, "Absolutely not. This is garbage." But um. So they're the hit and miss. They can be anyway. But if you find a good course and it's something, it's a course delivered by somebody who knows their stuff, they've made the course well online, they can work because you can learn at your own pace. You can pause, you can skip backwards and forwards between chapters and clips. That can work. The other way that you can learn something like Inventor, and this sort of fits into the how, is just figure it out yourself. Just Figure it out. Just have a crack. Don't take any outside assistance in the, in the first instance anyway. Just figure it out. And that's exactly how I learned Autodesk Inventor. That's how I got started. Um, and this links in with the, the when's the best time. Because you, you can want to learn something, right? You can, you, you can quite fancy learning something. But for me, I absolutely needed to learn Autodesk Inventor. I had to learn Autodesk Inventor. It was mid-2005. Uh, I, I'd worked in the, the reseller for about a year, maybe two years at that time. And up until that point, all Autodesk Inventor, I mean, Inventor had only been out for five, six years by that point. I I was the AutoCAD guy, uh, expert at AutoCAD at that point. Any inv Inventor was terrifying to me, absolutely just mortifying. Wanted to dodge it. At, at any costs, so I'd I, I was just deflecting all inventor queries over to a guy called Simon who hated me. <laughs> this guy called Simon Wilkinson, he just hated me. But my boss Colin said this was at Symmetry. Um, he said, "Look, you're going to be doing pre-sales demos pretty soon. We're going to be sending you out to customer sites, and you're going to be doing pre-sales demos." Uh, and I was like, "Oh, okay, all right." <laughs> Have I got a choice in the matter? Nope. Right. right. So I, I absolutely had to learn Inventor. No choice in the matter. So I didn't get to sit on the training course. Didn't have the luxury of that. YouTube didn't exist. This was 2005. So what I did, and honestly, cards on the table, this is how I would do it again. And this is, again, honestly, this is what I would recommend anyone else does. It's for me personally, in my experience, isn't going to be the best way for everyone but it was the best way for me. I picked something in my vicinity that I found interesting, that I thought would work best for me, that I found I, I could look at for a long period of time and stay interested in, interested in, and I started to model it in Inventor. And it was my laptop. It was the actual laptop I was using at the time. Uh, and it was this one here. So I don't have the actual model anymore, but I've got the render of the actual model. And I think if you go to the properties of this, uh, yeah, so it was done in 2000. The render was done in 2006, but I think I modeled it in sort of roughly 2005. And that was before YouTube. I mean, I think YouTube launched in 2006. So there's no inventor videos around there. I think I got some, I think I got some assistance, some tips, some hints from a guy called Craig at the time who still works at Symmetry. And um, that was how I learned. Just take the laptop in front of me, model it. 
Uh, and I also did that with an iPod. That's how old this is. But that was a great way of learning, right? Sweeps, figure out how to do a sweep, figure out how to do, you know, what, how to get a Chrome material on. Uh, and the, <laughs> so old. That was my old house landline phone. It was a cordless landline phone, just curved surfaces. Inventor didn't have free form or anything back then. There was no organic free form or, you know, T-splines or anything. Didn't exist back then. But how to get a curved surface, figure it out, figure it out. But the laptop, the laptop itself was possibly the best thing that I ever tried to model. There were so many challenges to face trying to figure out how to model it. Take, take for example, the keys. Just granted there's no letters on them. I could, I, I could never figure that out back then. But creating a, a pattern of the keys, the pattern went all the way across and hit the edge of the bezel. But there was a, a return key there. And I needed to figure out how to get rid. Well, I knew I needed to remove two keys from the pattern. But how? The pattern hit the edge of the bezel. How do I get rid of two keys? Do I, do I stop the pattern? But then I need to pattern the keys in the other direction as well. So how do I remove items from a pattern? I know that's what I need to do. How do I do it? Can I do it? So it was a case of just poking around the software, poking around the browser tree, looking for something that looks like it would do what I think I need to do and trial and error it. And eventually you find the thing that does what you wanted it to do. And eventually, because it's you looking for something that you know you want to do, it's a real world example, it sticks. And for me, that worked. If somebody was to have taught me this in a classroom, it wouldn't have stuck. Uh, things like putting a cut on a curved uh, hinge, that was quite a challenge. Uh, doing a like, a, I mean, this is so old. It's, there's a there's an actual that, that's your ex, that was your external storage, like a mecha- two point five inch mechanical hard drive in a laptop. But like putting a, a decal on a on a hard drive tray, doing a split surface on a you know getting the tray to come out, the, the constraints, that kind of thing. There's recesses, variable radius fillets, all that kind of stuff. Things that I knew I needed or wanted to do, but no idea how to do them. Just poking around the buttons, looking for something that looked like it does what I wanted it to do. And eventually I got there and the journey of getting there took me through most of the buttons that were in Inventor at the time. And that was my way of learning. And... It was because I had to. I absolutely had to learn it because very shortly afterwards, I was going to this company here. This is a company uh, in uh, Newcastle who make road signs. And they, at the time, they used AutoCAD. And this was, I alluded to this in the, what the what or WTF is, or Desk Inventor video that I've just released. This was the golden era. Oh, it was uh, such good days. So many companies still on AutoCAD who had no idea what 3D was or how it could improve their business. So they sent their AutoCAD drawings in and it was my job to go in with the salesman, a guy called Michael, and just impress them. Just impress them with Inventor to a point that they wanted to place an order with us for Autodesk Inventor and convert their entire business over from AutoCAD to Inventor. And that was basically the theme of the reseller channel in the 2000s, converting customers from AutoCAD to Inventor. So I took their drones, modeled their trailers into 3D, created a nice little render, and it absolutely blew them away. They, they I'll never forget how impressed they were at seeing their products for the first time in 3D like this. This was the mid two thousands. Don't forget it. By today's standards, this is not impressive. But yet, by mid two thousands, this was mind blowing, uh, and especially something like this. Uh, this is what they call a character module. So this shows a single letter in a road sign. So there's sort of like dozens, maybe hundreds of little LEDs, and they all light up to show a letter in one of these road signs. So one of these road signs will show sort of a number, so sort of 30 or 40, so miles per hour or kilometers an hour. Uh, and inside these are these, and they light up to show a letter. And again, just that previously was just a 2D sketch in AutoCAD. And here, here's me turning up and saying, there's your character module. 
And they're like, hang on a minute, what, what, what? You, you've done that in the time we sent you the drones a, a week or two ago. And I'm like, yeah. Imagine what you, you could do once you used Autodesk and Vendor. Imagine what you could do. And then there's your parts list, there's your bill of materials, th- there's your weights, there's your center of gravity, right? You put it up on the gantry, right? It's something they've never done before, right? Where's the gantry? There it is, there's the gantry. That's the center of gravity of it. That's how much it weighs. Imagine you can now just disassemble it, put it on a chuck. That's how much the chuck's going to weigh, blah, 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 blah. They were like, <laughs> insane. I mean, in these pictures here, this is just camera trickery. It was just me setting the background instead of Inventor's gradient background. It's just setting a photo. I just went to Google and just did a road picture, <laughs> set the background, and then uh, just superimposed. Well, no, I just adjusted the camera of the model to to look like it was over the over a road but it was just the uh, the photo used as inventor's background but that blew their minds absolutely incredible but that was my first ever inventor demo and um it, it resulted in the biggest ever uk manufacturing order in in autodesk's history and they're still a customer of autodesk's today and that was my need i needed to learn inventor to become uh, an applications engineer to start demoing Inventor to customers like these guys. And I've got so much to thank my old boss, Colin, for who I think I have. I I have in the past. I don't think I've sort of, I haven't saw him in a long time, but if Colin ever watches this, Colin, you've got, I've got a lot to thank you for because he started me on the journey of of Inventor by forcing me to learn it. (laughs) But um, yeah, we ended up trying to flog Inventor to companies that make bathrooms and uh, this was a company up up in the northeast that make <laughs> sort of they make prefabricated bathrooms for hotels and furniture and stuff like that so I, I modeled up a sofa in some weird maritime looking tv cabinet and a coffee table and this really weird i don't know where i found this from this this it, it, phone table lamp table thing here with this hangy thing i don't know what the hell that was but i found that online and i thought that looks weird to model but it's got this sort of curve. The textures are awful. Absolutely shocking. But um, modeled that up, tried to sell this <laughs> Inventor to this bathroom company. I think they might have bought it. I can't remember. And then we tried to sell Inventor to a company that made uh, artificial rocks for rock climbing. I don't think they bought it. <laughs> I don't blame them. <laughs> but it was worth a shot. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That's um, That was my journey. And my learning style is just self-teaching and I've, I've stuck with that I wouldn't say aggressively but I, I do get a little bit frustrated with people who don't want to help themselves because personally I find that's the best way if you've got if, if you come across a problem figure it out or try and figure it out yourself right um there's there's always self-help available and I find that if, if you don't understand why you've hit a problem and what you what you need to look for then i'm not sure you understand what the answer is that you're given um but you know then that's why i started chucking out small tips and tricks it's for those people who do want self-help you know it's the people that are, are coming across problems and, and they're, they're actively looking for that 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 self-help so to answer in a very long-winded way when's the best time to learn inventor it's the best time is when you absolutely have to or you absolutely need to in my experience if you just want to because it looks like a good bit of fun there's a huge learning curve curve to get over i have i think i said it earlier i've tried to learn unreal engine 5 recently because i just fancied it and I, I, I i can't put the time aside i hit so many time obstacles that i can't get that continuation so yeah, and how depends. Everyone's different. Some people take the classroom, some people don't. But in my experience, find something in your lo- in your vicinity that you think is interesting. You might have a three D mouse. I mean, if you don't know Inventor, you probably don't have a three D mouse. But I modeled that up again. That's something else that I modeled up. A three D mouse, right? Just taking that, figuring out right, how do I get the contours of the base right? How do I get the cap right? How do I get the little, the buttons and the the decals and all kinds of stuff? I think I made that. I think that was a video on my channel. I actually modeled that up. But 
yeah, it could be a 3D printer, it could be a laptop, it could be a set of headphones, right? There's all kinds of stuff on here, the, the mechanism, the, the hinges. Something interesting, something visually stimulating that along the way you'll get satisfaction from, you know, little wins from uh, as you're going through. Don't pick something really boring, like a, a bottle, right? <laughs> like a water bottle, because you'll get bored modeling that. Um, but... Yeah, that's. I think that's that's the answer. Before uni or after uni, I, I, I don't have an answer to that one. I mean, it, that, that depends on time commitments. I would probably if 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 your uni if your university course requires, or if you're in a mechanical engineering university course, then I, I don't know. I, I would say after, right? It's it's going to take up so much of your time. I, I, would, I wouldn't want it to detract from your studies. Um. It's difficult. If you're in university, and after university, you're going to be job hunting. I'd be hesitant to say learn inventor because you might end up applying for a job with a company that uses SolidWorks, and all of a sudden, that knowledge you've, you've been learning on inventor is going to be wasted. So, you know. <sighs> it's it's tricky again this is this is something there's just no answer to do you learn inventor then go and find a job that requires inventor or do you look for a job that uh, right that's that requires solidworks then learn solidworks it's it's a it's a difficult one you know some companies will just take you on based on your engineering knowledge and as long as you've got a little bit of SolidWorks experience, that's enough. Once you're in, then improve your SolidWorks experience by doing what I've just said. Uh, it's probably not the best approach to learn an, an application like Inventor offline before you've got employment in the hopes that you end up in a role that requires Inventor because there is a good chance you might end up finding an opening with a company that doesn't even use Inventor, and then all of a sudden you've got to learn something else. Uh, that's uh, it's it's a difficult one, but yeah, I would say if you, if you're in university and you are studying mechanical engineering, that's more the stronger skill set than the software. You're going to get a job based on that over your your software experience. So um, yeah, I would uh, I would I would approach it that way. Anyway, twenty seven minutes. Hopefully that was mostly useful and interesting good filler content before i'm traveling at the end of this week i'm going to us and a uh, for something that i can't talk about but it will become uh, it'll become apparent momentarily but yeah thanks for watching listening and doing whatever you've done whilst i've been waffling throughout but my name is neil cross this has been tech 3d that's been the best time to learn vendor and how uh, whether or not you can refer back to this in the future, because given how long it is, I don't know. But that's my story. That's how I learned. That's how I would suggest you do. In the future, I might consider creating some additional learning content. It probably won't be on YouTube. Uh, I just I don't think YouTube's not the best place for me to be creating learning content at this point. But uh, I might make some on a different platform. I don't know. It's, it's something I've thought about, but uh, it's just how best to uh, position it i don't know but we'll see thanks very much for watching thanks for the question john and i'll see you in the next one doodles